David is the uh, CEO and president of the American Football Association. And for those of you who don't know what the American Football Association is, well, you're going to find out today. It's Football Sunday, David. We have you on. Uh, the American Football Association is, you know, I call it semi-pro, minor league. Um, but, you know, it's for, it's, for, it's for people that, you know, love the game, right? That's correct. Um, we provide services to semi-pro minor league football teams around the country. Um, we provide um, membership for teams and uh, to different leagues and individual teams. We have um, uh, the biggest league we have is the National Public Safety Football League, which is based out of New York City. And that's all of the policemen and firemen around the United States. Uh, we have the Empire Football League in upstate New York, East Coast Football League, primarily in New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Mason Dixon Football League, um, in the Virginia, North Carolina area. And then we have a women's football league, the Women's National Football Conference, which is women's amateur football all over the United States. So we provide services to them. We make it um, affordable for them to get general liability insurance. Because if, you, if you're going to play a football game and rent somebody's stadium, you got to have general liability insurance. If you're going to rent, rent somebody's field, and we offer through our insurance carrier the lowest cost uh, general liability policies in the United States. So that's the other thing we do for member teams and leagues. And of course, to get access to that, they have to join the AFA and we offer a whole bunch of other services. You know, if you got a 501c3, you wanna get processed, well, you know, we'll help you do that because I'm also involved with SCORE. I'm a SCORE mentor so we can help you through all of those things that you need to do as a nonprofit or as a business. So that's the other uh, side activity that I do. And in addition to that, we have um, alumni memberships. And these are all of the people who've ever played or followed the game and they can join as alumni members, much the same as the NFL uh, with their alumni. Uh, but one of the features is that with our Hall of Fame, which has been around for 40 years, um, being an active alumni allows you to get a ballot to nominate someone to our Hall of Fame. And right now we got about 700 members that span the, uh, the years from 1980 up to now. Wow. So, so you guys, you started back, this, this whole thing started back in 1980, right? And for, for those of you who are just joining, I'm on with David Birch, the CEO and president of the American Football Association, or as we're going to start calling it right now is the AFA. And you can go visit their website at www.americanfootballassn.com. Correct, David? That's correct. Now, uh, you know, the organization was founded back in 1980 by Ron Reel. Uh, upon his passing, I took over the organization around 19, uh, eh, no, 2007, 2007. So I've been running the organization since then. And um, we have our Hall of Fame inductions every year for the last eight years at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, well attended. And we usually induct 18 to 20 people a year. So we have a, a long ceremony when people start talking about their careers and the, the excitement of the honor. Okay, so we have that whole thing that's established as one of the um, foundations of the organization, if you will. Hall of Fame, the um, alumni memberships, and team and league memberships. Now you have, how many cities are, they? well, I mean, if you could just give us a round number, how many cities are you in currently? How many teams do you have? I know, you know, you mentioned in New York, you know, the firemen and the police. You mentioned Mason Dixon. You mentioned uh, uh, Empire. You also mentioned that I'm going to call it the WNFC, right? The Women's National Football Conference. Um, yeah, we so have how, how many teams do you have? I mean, this is, I, I, you know, obviously we've, by the way, we've known each other for over a year now. And, uh, um, right. You know, I, I was amazed when I first met you to find out uh, exactly because I, I didn't realize that this was so widespread. Yeah, there's teams in just about every state. The way I see it right now, we got close to 500 teams. Wow. In existence. 
nationwide, there's close to 1,500 teams. They come and go every year. Um, and that's why my focus has been on leagues, because leagues tend to do a better job of managing these teams. They have a structured process, um, rules, and, and that's what we're really looking for. Uh, one of the things we attempted to do in 2019, but we ran out of time, is resurrect the national playoffs to a national Super Bowl. So we started here in the Northeast. We had the Empire Football League champion play the East Coast Football League champion. And then we were looking for the next league champion to schedule a game. Uh, but we just ran out of time. So, and of course, 2020, we were going to, you know, throw the switch on that and really hit the ground running. But because of COVID, you know, a lot of teams just shut down for the year. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, to, to limit liability, to limit people getting sick, you couldn't get fields. It was just too many variables. So as a result of that, 2021, we we're going to hit the ground running with not only increased memberships, but league memberships and the, uh, the goal of that national title where AFA member leagues have a playoff. I mean, we got the structure in place and everything. We even had a field in January next month to try to attempt to do a piece of it. But, you know, it, it was just too much risk. It's probably, it's probably tough, you know, especially now trying to get everything together. But, um, you know, you mentioned the NFL Hall of Fame where you actually have your ceremony, if I'm not mistaken. But now you also, we spoke last week and you said you just opened up um, oh. your, just, just to let you guys know, David is up north. I mean, when I say north, I mean like Syracuse north, okay? Um, you know, so, so David, you know, you'd mentioned you'd opened up a, um, a Hall of Fame well, for the AFA by itself. Is that, am I right or? No, no, no. I'm a member of the uh, board of directors for the Greater Binghamton Sports Hall of Fame. There you go. My bad. Okay. And they got a storefront in the mall. So um, they populated it with members of the Greater Binghamton Sports Hall of Fame. And since I was one of the sponsors, they gave me a little space in it to display whatever I wanted. So I brought in some of the AFA artifacts from the last 40 years, um, the Arcus Trophy. Uh, that trophy is about six foot high. It has the names of all of the previous champions, not only the teams, but the names of the players on that trophy, okay? Um, a lot of the plaques, programs, those kinds of things so that people could see what the AFA is all about. So we got a little section in that museum and uh, with the objective of really putting together a virtual display of the museum and putting that on social media so everybody can see it. And also the objective is you know, to move it around to different cities so people can see it. We had right. some, um, some advisors who are uh, museum curators helped us put this thing together. So it's, uh, it's really a first class thing. And uh, although, uh, you know, one of my um, distractions, when you get things like that, you always get players coming up with their individual pictures wanting to give it to you so they could put it in. So we've been inundated with stuff. Okay? Sure, sure, is, sure. So as a result of that, you know, we're going to be looking at rotating displays. So it's always going to be new material. I mean, we've got enough material there for the next, the next few years. So that's been the biggest project uh, in the last few weeks. And it was perfect because what are you going to do this time of the year? And it's been, you know, the place has been well attended. Of course, um, we're limited because of COVID, so we can only have 10 people in the, in the storefront at one time. It'll accommodate maybe 40 or 50. So we've had the soft opening uh, with the objective when things stabilize, we're going to have a grand opening uh, where everybody can attend, you know, and especially the, the members of the Greater Binghamton Sports Hall of Fame to look at all the artifacts in it. I mean, we have, we have um, stuff from our hockey team. Um, there's pictures of the founder of the uh, TC Jets, who's a good friend of mine. And there's pictures of him and Joe Namath because at one time we all tried out for the New York Jets. Okay, we were recruited by the Jets, especially the strike year. 
So we've got a lot of history. Um, uh, we even have um, um, a thoroughbred horse who's okay. is on display. We have, uh, we have Randy Will's um, ski, uh, snowmobile shell. Randy Will was one of our local um, sports figures who participated in the Olympics, okay? Um, a lot of things like that. And, and it's, it, it's really quite a display. And of course, in the corner is the AFA stuff. And you could look at our trophy. Um, we got a lot of players in the area, a lot of players across the country, as far away as Daly City, California, whose names are on this trophy. And they've just never seen it before. The, the pictures have always been there uh, on social media and stuff. But I had to put it back together. Now, have you got, has my friend Terrence Rollins gotten his name on that trophy? No. Okay, well, we won't tell him that. And T, if you're listening, I had to bring that up. Because um, I think he just got inducted into the Hall of Fame, didn't he? Yes, he did a few years ago. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. and by the way, you mentioned the TC Jets. So, therefore, I have to say J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And, you know, I had an interview this morning with Fred Baxter. And we talked about the Jets and we talked about their losing ways. And I said to him this morning, I said, Watch the Jets win another one today. And guess what they did, Dave? They won another game Good. today. Um, yeah. so, so now, out for the Jets. right? I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah, when we went out for the Jets, Namath was the quarterback, Emerson Boozer, and Matt Snell were the Matt running Snell, backs. Sure. You know, one of our guys, uh, Joe Greco, uh, tried out for tight end, he made the last cut. Um, so we, we got a chance to meet those guys and it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, see, that's, um, you know, that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite jet teams. I was seven years old when they won that Super Bowl with Boozer and Snell and Namath and, you know. Um, at that point, Riggins was playing with the Jets also. No, no, he was, he was actually a little bit after he came after they won the Super Bowl and then, you know, he decided yes. he didn't want to play for the, he decided he didn't want to play for the Jets anymore. And, Became famous with the Redskins, but he'll always be a New York Jet in my mind. Yeah, we hung. We all hung out one night. Yes. Yeah. yeah that yeah, was. Yeah. That was after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, it was. It was. It was a lot of fun, and and you know you you watch these guys play, but you don't get appreciation for the amount of work. I had the pleasure of looking at their playbook, and the playbook looked like. Um, two volumes of an encyclopedia. And the way they explained it to me on every play, you got to know what you're doing and you got to know what the, the next three or four people around you are doing. So it's, it's just not walking out and saying, I'm going to play football. And it's- Well, it's, you know, that's, uh, but that, you know, but then again, that's all the regular people like myself or anybody else who's sitting around on a Sunday or a Saturday. That's all we see, you know, they come out of the tunnel, they come on the field and, you know, Fred Baxter made a great point today when we talked about, you know, some people wanted to see the Jets go 0-16. I was one of them, but I'm okay with 2-14. and 14. But, you know, when it's all said and done, they have five picks in the top 65. They have $100 million in cap space. But what Fred said this morning, he goes, look, you don't realize, okay, these are grown men and the amount of work that they right. put in, um, right. they're not looking to go 0 and 16. You know, just things happen. You know, they, right. they you know, mistakes happen. They, they, the ball bounces the wrong way. I mean, uh, look at today's, uh, I don't know if you saw the end of the Kansas City game today. But Atlanta drove down the field after Kansas City scored, and then they missed a chippy field goal, and Kansas City wins. Or last night's game with the Dolphins and the Raiders, which that was a coaching error, but that's a whole other story. But, you know, these guys put a lot of effort into uh, – listen, it's a job, David. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's a job. And it's one that, when given the opportunity, I wasn't interested in, okay? Not that level. I'd enjoyed my job, my day job at IBM. I loved it. <laughs> so to, to try to switch to that, uh, I don't think it would have been much fun. But it's, playing it's amateur, tough. Football, amateur football was fun. I played on and off from 1970 to 1996. 
and um, it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. Hey, listen, if you played on and off for 26 years, you're lucky. You know, some guys in the NFL, <laughs> they played 26 minutes and they're done. Yeah. Um, on and off. Uh, uh, listen, on and off is okay. On and off is okay. You know, again, we're here with uh, with David Birch, the CEO and president of the American Football Association. If you want to find out about him, you go to www.americanfootballassn.com. And, you know, you could check out everything, you know, the about us, you could read about the Hall of Fame, you could check out the news. Um, you could even donate because obviously, you know, leagues like yours, you know, thrive on donations, you know, yeah. to help to help guys, you know, play. And uh, um, now if, if someone wants to go out and set up a team and join a league, let's say I want I don't. But let's say I did, because again, I'm not, you know, I'm on the off side of life now, not the on. Um, so some team wants to join. Is it difficult to join a league or, you know, how does it work? It's not difficult to join a league. Most leagues have requirements where they take a look at your structure. They want to make sure you have a feel. Most, most leagues have requirements that you, you have access to a lighted feel, that you have access to locker room. I mean, those are those are the basic things. If you don't, you know, this is not sandlot. You just don't show up in your car and, and, and get out and start playing football. I mean, we have trained officials um, that and we have a, a very defined structure. And um, a lot of these teams, uh, some of the, the teams that aren't very successful, don't realize that. And they wake up one day and say, well, I want to start a football team. Well, I want to buy uniforms. Well, um, I want to try to find sponsors. Oh, I don't have a feel. I don't have a lighted feel. I don't have a feel that's lighted with locker rooms. I don't have access to officials. All of those things in the background that are structurally needed that a league provides for you. It, it's a, a daunting task for an individual owner. You, you just, and that's why a lot of these teams fail. You know, they come and go. So uh, my focus has been on getting leagues uh, because they follow through and they have, they have rules in place to enforce compliance to the rules. I, you know, cause I keep telling them, I don't want to be a governing agency nationwide. I, I can't do it. Okay. I'm not interested in doing it. <laughs> so we rely on leagues and, and I provide them with templates for bylaws and operational structure and that kind of thing from some of the more successful organizations. And, and they, they model that and they, it works out pretty good. Well, that's great that, you know, David, I, I have to bring it up. And again, we're on with David Birch, the CEO and president. And I have to keep telling people so they know who you are. And then when they see the live recording, the American Football Association, you can visit them at www.americanfootballassn.com. Um, now, David, also, I know, you obviously have one of our digital cards. I just wanted to get your take on your thoughts on, you know, what you think about it. Obviously, you know, everybody that comes on and we talk about the main thing we try to do here is we try to get you as our client, as our friend exposure. So people can go visit your website and go look at some different things. But, you know, we also want to see what your feeling is on the card. So if anybody's listening and say, well, hey, David uses it, I might as well get one. Okay. You can still hear me, right? Yeah, yo, I got you. Good. I think it's an excellent uh, tool for um, socializing your business, um, promoting your business. And given the current environment with COVID, you don't have to handle business cards anymore. You can do it electronically. And not only can you do it electronically, but you could put so much more information in there. I mean, you, you could put logos, you could put hyperlinks, you could put social media links. And I think that's, that's the right way to go, okay? And then you can embed it in your website, and on and on and on. I love it. And I've shared it with tons of people. And of course, if you go to my website, you'll, you'll see the promotional link and, and it's all over my Facebook site, it's all over my social media site. So, it's just an outstanding tool. I just think we need to keep socializing it with people so they realize the importance of it. Well, you know, 2020 has been uh, 
it's been an interesting year to say the least for everybody. Yes. Um, and you know, hopefully, you know, we'll come out of this on the other side <laughs> somehow. We'll we'll come out okay. But listen, Dave, I want to thank you for your time. Again, David Bird, CEO and president of the American Football Association, www.americanfootballassn.com. David, thank you. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to the best for 2021. All right. Stay well, my friend. And thank you for coming on. But, but you want some snow? We got 42 inches up here. No, I, listen, I got to tell you, I, I woke up, uh, what was it, last, last night was, uh, no, last night wasn't that cold. It was 42. The night before, it was like 36 degrees. I don't, I don't, I'm okay. And I live in Florida, so I don't need the snow. I'm okay. Oh, that's right. Well, it was 18 last night here. Yeah, no, no thank you, man. You know, <laughs> and just to let people know before we go, David told me a funny story the other day about the mail, and he couldn't even get to his mailbox. The snow is so deep. And the poor woman, uh, the postal lady, who is under six feet tall, five was foot. trying, five. under five feet tall, was trying to walk to the front of his house with the mail, but she couldn't get through the snow because it was above her head. And I had to stop because at the curb, it was above my head. It was seven foot tall from the snowplow. So I just gave up because had I fallen in the snow with an injury, nobody could have seen me from the street. Yeah, talk talk about I've fallen and I can't get up. I'm get telling up. you, David. <laughs> that, that, is, that is unbelievable. No, no, thanks. I, I'm good. I'm good. I, you know. Okay. Well, I, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Thank David, you. And I appreciate the time. And for those of you who want to know, it's www.americanfootballassn.com. David Birch, CEO and president of the American Football Association. Happy New Year. Happy holidays to you and your family. And thanks for coming on, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. You have a great night. Absolutely. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.